I think Web3 is going to redefine the world. It's going to change the architecture of how things are done because it is so much more efficient, so much more uh, person to person, so much more decentralized. I think of Web3 a little bit broader than the general conventional definition, which is a blockchain driven world. I think it's mostly that and I'm going to come back to it. But I'd like to add on two other dimensions which I think are important. One is the relevance of 5G and the capacity to have both bandwidth and latency, uh, which makes a meta world possible. I think, uh, so while it's not strictly Web3, but I think the metaverse uh, hybrid 3D world, I think you'll see that quite tightly coupled with people's understanding and the layman's notion of Web3. The other thing you refer to, I think our data and artificial intelligence are also going to be fundamental to Web3. They've been there in Web2, so it's not new, but uh, we're still only scratching the surface of what data and AI can do. And I think in Web3, you will find, therefore, that AI and data will uh, lead to exponential change in the way things happen. So if you just focus on the blockchain or the distributed ledger possibilities of Web3, one, it allows you proof of uh, identity. And that's important because this whole idea of self-sovereign identity, you're not relying on multiple you know, platforms, etc., to prove identity is, is quite powerful. It's got uh, uh, um, really good relevance. Second, I see it being able to give you proof of value. So you, you know, whether it's a crypto or a Bitcoin or any other kind of token, uh, you can go back and say, is this real value? But it does give you proof of value. Uh, I think a blockchain, a distributed ledger, can give you proof of obligation which is what we are trying to do, for example, in the payment space, when we're trying to change the settlement paradigm, uh, it is a proof of obligation. And finally, I think uh, in some ways it gives you proof of transaction. So you can determine in a decentralized chain with everybody's records that transaction happened and how a transaction is flowing. Uh, a trade finance is a fantastic use case for something like this because the documents need to flow from the shipper to the bank, etc., etc. And at any point in time, this gives you a proof of identification, uh, transaction flow. So the underlying architecture of a distributed ledger world or a blockchain world, client blockchain client, which is what underlies uh, Web3, uh, is really powerful because it lets you do some very fundamental things. It goes back to the question of, do you imagine a completely decentralized world with no intermediaries or not? And if theoretically you do, that you don't need any intermediaries, everybody contracts, then trust can be embedded in a smart contract and you will eventually trust the smart contract like you trust a handshake or you trust somebody's word or you trust a signature and check, it could happen. Uh, if you're of the view that I am, that you will not get to a completely disintermediated world, you will have an intermediated world where the power of Web3 can be made available, but you will still have people who own customer relationships, that human beings will still want to congregate at places, they will want to hang around in virtual clubs, uh, then I think you will still have a role for institutions who own relationships. Right. And institutions who manage customer experiences. Yes. And institutions who provide the advice to help people through the process. And if you believe that that is the world you're going to, an intermediated world, then I do think there is still a role for trust, anchor of good customer experience, loyalty, and being able to service true customer needs.